back to the Virtually Vikings radio show. I'm your host, Mickey Johns, the recruiter for, one of the recruiters for St. John's River State College. And today we're going to discuss all things student support ombuds with the student support ombuds department. They are currently made up of Dr. Iana Harris, Hello. George Brownette, and Chelsea West. Thank you all for joining me today. Thank Hi. you for asking yeah. us. Greetings. So, Dr. Harris, let's start with you because you are the original when it comes to this department. <laughs> what exactly is a student support ombuds? Um, so that is my elevator speech that I say to people a lot. Um, a year ago is when the college started this position. And as we were evolving into things, we decided it was really, really important to deal with students' holistic wellness. So we knew that it was more than a student going to class each day that was going to be really important for our students to be able to manage all parts of their existence here at the college. So the administration and the advising team, everyone decided, let's figure out how to address some of the issues that are going on and that will be going on. Things such as academic preparedness and students who are at risk, students who are experiencing mental health crises or mental health needs, students who are, who are experiencing uh, deficiencies and in housing insecurities, food insecurity. So we wanted to be able to have a conduit to help students find those resources and to help students have what we call case management. And we'll talk a little more about that in a minute. But we really wanted to make sure that we could serve our students in an extended way that's more than um, just simply going to class and simply is not really simply, but going to class and doing homework because there was so much more that comes to student success and retention. So that's how we got started. And I mean, obviously, I want the listeners to learn about each of you individually as well. Why is the position so important to you personally? Dr. Harris, we'll start with you again. So I have been in education my entire world, basically. All my degrees are in education of some sort. I come from a line of educators. My grandmother taught kindergarten for like 40 years. God bless her. Um, and education's always been something I wanted to do. And I fell in love with higher education and really fell in love with the community college. And I know we're a state college, but it's still the community's college. And this is the community where I went to high school. I took classes here when I was in high school through dual enrollment, go dual enrollment, and really felt it was necessary to help impact others. I have children in this community, grandchildren in this community, and I know that there's so much more. I wanted to be the person that I didn't necessarily get when I was in college because I went to a large school and I got lost. So mm -hmm. I know that many of our students need someone like us. They need someone to nurture them, to love them, to get on them, all of those things. So that's why it means so much to me. And then Mr. George Brownett. Why did you jump from advising to the ombuds part? Like, what was important for you for joining it? So, yes, very similar to Dr. Harris's story. I've only ever worked in education. Long family history of educators um, have worked in academic advising in different capacities over the years. Um, Having a background uh, in assisting students at all grade levels, uh, having worked at the middle grade levels, as well as both university and at the junior and state levels, um, you see a lot of needs for students holistically um, in terms of wellness beyond just issues they're having in classes. Uh, because there's a link between often the success students are having academically and their total well-being, you know, just the wellness in their lives. And so I've always been interested in the whole total student. Uh, and so I was really drawn to wanting to uh, step into this support position. And you're amazing for it. Uh, with Ms. Chelsea and, West, and I'll, you I'll are... take your compliments. Say it right? again. <laughs> yeah. And then Ms. Chelsea West, you are the newest uh recruit into the department the newest of the college kind of as far as this team goes why did you join the department 
Yeah. So um, when I was in college, I had a lot going on. I was that student who had really difficult life circumstances kind of working against me. So I had a lot going on outside of just trying to navigate being a college student in that transition from high school to college and what that looked like with everything else that was kind of swirling on in the background. Um, and unlike Dr. Harris, I did have somebody who reached out to me and was there to love me and nurture me and check on me and say, hey, are you going to class today? Like you need to be in class um, while also helping me address the issues that were going on outside of the school. And I was able to recognize that without that person, like I definitely wouldn't be where I am today, as cheesy as it is to say. Um, and then so that's kind of where how I ended up in higher education. And then when this position popped up, I was like, wow, that is something that I would really love to do. So now I'm here. We're happy to have you and totally not cheesy. I can tell you when my yeah. advisor, when I left here, went on to a university and felt lost, the advisor who cared and checked in was the one that made me get through. So not cheesy at all, totally claim it. It's awesome. Um, but, Within your department, again, it's new were to some people. We have these great lists of things that you guys provide, but sometimes we as a college or as upper education kind of use broad terms that sometimes people fall through the cracks because they don't realize that it applies to them. So if you guys don't mind, I'm gonna kind of go through what we list as your support, support availability um, and just kind of explain it all, give some suggestions kind of where we're going to go next with this. Uh, we're going to start with Chelsea. And you cover on and off campus resource referrals. What exactly does that mean? How do we help with that? Yeah, so as Dr. Harris mentioned, the ombuds are really here to support students holistically, which means we want to be able to address every aspect of their life, not just their student lives. Um, mm -hmm. So we recognize that a lot of students, every student that comes through the doors at St. John's River is going to have a different story and how they got here and different things that they're experiencing outside of SJR State, which also means that they're going to have different needs while they're here with us as well. So we want to be able to not only work with our campus partners to connect students with maybe the tutoring center or the writing center, maybe career development, student engagement, to make sure that they're being promoted or supported. Um, on campus, but also being able to address those off campus needs that they have as well. So some of the things that we work with are community partners within Clay, Palatka, and also in um, St. John's County. So we do a lot of resource referrals for students who maybe are experiencing homelessness or have food insecurity, have childcare needs, all that kind of stuff. So we can ensure that they're being supported as a whole person and not just as a student. And you mentioned a homelessness, but, and we have kind of separate from that would be the homeless liaison, which Dr. Harris, you're the specialist when it comes to that. What exactly do you do as the homeless liaison for the college? So surprising to some and not surprising to others, we have a very large homeless population in our um, communities and homeless doesn't necessarily a lot of us will think about the person who's sleeping on the street, but it could mean that a person is couch surfing or they're doubling up or they're living with a friend or someone else who, and they, if you don't have a secure nightly environment, a, a fixed, stable environment to sleep in, you can be considered to be um, experiencing homelessness. A lot of our students coming out of high school or out of school have uh, receive services through what's called McKinney Vento. So those students come to us already and we know that they're receiving those services. So they are considered um, to be homeless for that sake. A lot of our students were finding out through various situations that they are experiencing homelessness. And however the student comes to us, we do work with them um, to make sure that they've done their FAFSAs, make sure that they've picked their classes, referring them to proper resources, and even referring them for some tuition assistance. So we do that. Same with students who are um, adopted students or foster care students. They, they come and we help them to make um, transitions into what services we offer here at the college. So a lot of times people just don't know it's uh, something they need to express. People will kind of struggle more than they might need to because they don't know that the homeless liaison is a person here on campus. So come through the ombuds office, um, any of the campuses, and we can really help connect you to those different resources. 
as well as um, housing issues and concerns. Uh, there are students who find themselves experiencing homelessness temporarily, some for a long period of time. So we have been able to connect students with some of our local shelters, um, even through um, places like Quigley House, uh, Lee Conley House, and oh, Betty, Betty Griffin House. So we have students who may be experiencing domestic violence issues and they need to get out of their home, get out of where they've been. So we re refer people there. There are resources in different places that do have shelters that are temporary shelters that will work with people, even working with them to find employment and things of that nature. So we've been able to work with those community partners to um, make some uh, referrals to them and just guide students in the right direction when it comes to experiencing homelessness, whether it's temporary or ongoing. Which is amazing. And you said referrals and the other referral we have on the website is the disability referrals. Now, George, you were the disability coordinator and still kind of are right now for St. Augustine. Is it the same thing or what do you do on the student support ombud side? So, Yes, each of our three campuses does have what is called a disabilities coordinator uh, for both Palaka, Orange Park, and St. Augustine. And I am currently the disability coordinator still for the St. Augustine campus. Uh, but for a student on any campus, uh, the Ombuds Office, one of our goals of referrals is to assist students with the steps if they have need to, uh, to look into setting up some accommodations. And so setting up accommodations is really an easy process. And so essentially the student will reach out, meet with that uh, disability coordinator and sort of have a conversation about what their needs are and what their prior learning needs have been uh, generally in um, K through 12. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of students who prior were receiving accommodations uh, they might have what would be called either an IEP, an individual education plan, or a 504 plan. Uh, some students may have other uh, medical needs or are um, receiving counseling services. Uh, there's a lot of different ways that a student is eligible for accommodations. And accommodations can range from simply having extended time on test, uh, but also can be where the student might need additional assistance with note taking um, or might have needs where within the classroom they might have to uh, have the ability to leave the classroom as needed. Um, different things based on the needs of different students and their um, and their perhaps disability accommodations. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the number one thing always that's suggested, even when students do have accommodations set up, is always keep that open communication with your instructors uh, because there's a number of things that could be, yes, considered an accommodation, but we can't code or classify it specifically. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's as simple as talking with the instructor and simply acknowledging, hey, here's what's going on. Mm -hmm. And some of what we would call perhaps an accommodation could be unofficial with an instructor uh, when you're able to share you know, what's going on. So, so we always encourage students to talk about, you know, what they might need for their learning and what they might need for their other needs to be successful. Um, that's a goal coming and chatting with us in the ombuds office, chatting with your instructors, because uh, again, some students will forget, especially our first time in college students coming out of high school, that at this point, the instructor is looking at you now as an adult. Okay. So they're actually waiting for you to come and talk with them about things. Mm -hmm. And that's really a big difference than in high school where that teacher was so busy trying to manage the classroom and they sort of were not, you know, available for you to really have a conversation with. So, so really our focus with student ombuds is to try and make things as accessible as they can be for students. Um, and so accommodations for a lot of students can be can be very useful. So, so we always say, come and talk to somebody about it. And it's definitely important for our students to self-advocate as well. And it sounds like this is gonna be a great resource to help teach them that. Um, another thing that's listed on there, and I have to, I'm out in left field with this one, case management. Chelsea, what exactly does case management mean from your area? 
Yeah, so we have a lot of students who are transitioning right out of high school and high school is a different entity than college. Sometimes that transition can be a little bit difficult for students because a lot of times in high school, like they were able to get by maybe not doing as much homework or doing taking as many notes. Um, so a lot of times students will struggle with that transition to college and it's okay when we want students to know that it's okay um, and we're here to help them with that. So a lot of times we will be able to meet with students and say, okay, like what are some of the study tips that, or study habits that you have or um, what kind of notes are you taking and kind of work through them with that, um, work through their student success barriers that are there. Um, and then also not even just students that are transitioning out of high school, but also maybe some of our adult learners who have been out in the workforce for so many years and they're coming back to school after 10 years and getting back into school after being out for 10 years or 20 years, like it's difficult, it's hard. Um, so being able to work with those students and case manage them so we don't just meet with them once and send them on their way. We definitely make sure that we're following up with them. We want to be the persons who are nurturing them and loving them and checking on them and saying, hey, how'd that test go? Hey, are you going to class? Hey, is there anything else that you need? Um, and just making sure that we're kind of staying on top of them to ensure their success here at SGR State. And I'm assuming going with that would be kind of helping them learn how to goal set which is an amazing habit for our students to succeed in the classroom, but in life. Are there any tips that you kind of work through with students to kind of help start setting those goals? So a lot of times we'll sit down with them and kind of see what their long-term goal is. Um, I want to see maybe where they want to be in 10 years and then we kind of start from there and then work backwards. Like, okay, how are we going to get you from point A to point B? Um, so then we kind of see the broad picture and then we narrow it back down and we say, OK, so now we're here at SJR State. These are the classes that you're taking this semester. We have to take these to get to the next ones. So how are we going to be successful in the classes that you do currently have? Um, so that's where kind of where I start with students. And then after that, then I kind of move on to addressing, OK, is there anything going on outside of SJR State that's kind of impacting your ability to be successful in your classes? And if mm -hmm. they say yes, then we kind of move on to managing that and case managing that as well on top of the academic concerns. And if they say no, then that's totally fine. We just continue to focus on our academics. Mm -hmm. it's a great way of breaking it down. It's always helpful to hear other people point it out. Um, I think it's amazing that we as a college are starting to address and not starting, but have a specific group uh, addressing the overall holistic student wellness for students. And again, we have terms that can be overarching, like intellectual, occupational, physical, spiritual and cultural, environmental and social. And to each person, we can each kind of interpret those differently. Um, George, would you mind helping me kind of break down what these mean specifically and kind of give examples of what this overall, like overall holistic wellness is? So let's talk about holistic wellness. Yeah. So yes, if, if you go hopping on our student support ombuds webpage, you know, we have listed out factors of what one might consider as wellness. And, and yes, some of them are uh, a bit intellectual and as such that would be one of the first actual items that's listed so what would be intellectual wellness so uh, when we think of that let's first think of intellectual as who you are as a learner so a lot of the wellness has to do with are you having challenges as a learner in your classes and first are you really using resources that are available to you mm -hmm. you know a lot of students are not aware that we have the tutoring available in our libraries uh, both for math and for writing. Uh, and again, talking with that instructor often can create strategies for a learner, you know, to, to improve. So that intellectual wellness comes back to who am I as a learner? Mm -hmm. But, you know, intellectual wellness also takes into account other aspects of who our intellect is, and also it relates to creativity. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when you think about, uh, am I feeling that, uh, I'm too focused on just for the moment uh, only certain factors and I'm feeling sort of out of balance, you know, thinking about in terms of your overall wellness, you know, what pieces maybe aren't incorporated right now. So, you know, that could be what we would call intellectual. Uh, we have another lengthy also called occupational that we think of. And again, uh, we're using these 
larger concepts, but occupational really could mean several things. So first in terms of wellness is the wellness of do I have a plan that might be career related, you know, occupational. You know, you're here obviously to try to get to a point where at some time you will be in a job that is meaningful to you. Uh, we do offer career services at the college. Uh, Michelle Fox is our uh, career services coordinator, uh, and she can be easily um, uh, contacted, and we're happy to contact students with her. Uh, and we have a number of career tools available here at the college. Mm -hmm. But if we want to look to the other side of occupational, uh, we have a whole lot of students who are presently working while they're going to school. Mm -hmm. So what stresses may be occurring in balancing the school life work uh, daily to do. And so again, in the ombuds, we're, our goal is to look at strategies that will hopefully uh, help the student be able to find some better balance. Uh, there's the physical side of wellness, and that's most frequently often when we think of wellness, we hop to the physical side, which uh -huh. could relate to in fact our fitness. Uh, physical could mean many things. It can also mean are you getting out of sleep? Um, so there's a lot of aspects that affect our physical being. Um, and so uh, we try to promote as well when we chat with students, all things fitness and holistic related. Um, and we have some insights about that. So we're also able to share students with some uh, referrals to other uh, materials that uh, hopefully can help guide them to become what we will call physically well. Uh, then there is the spiritual or cultural side of wellness. Um, this could mean based on a student's practicing religion or a belief system uh, or a culture that they identify with uh, in terms of what is their balance with this. Uh, and again, this for many students, this is something that's a path at times. And so, you know, in the ombuds office, you know, we're here to talk about and again, if we can uh, provide some referrals to students. The environmental, we, we like to use a lot of long words in our wellness list, but environmental can mean a lot of factors. Uh, environmental can mean simply your home where you live, that is your environment. Uh, some students have a, a bit of stress going on at home. Uh, due to different factors mm -hmm. that can be relationship related or physical environment related. Uh, environment can be a little bit of everything uh, sitting, you know, in your classroom at school, but most notably, you know, we tend to think of it probably as often our home life. And so we want to make sure students are well and healthy in their home life. And then there's that social aspect. Um, notably, uh, we are always wanting to connect with people socially, but at times that creates a lot of difficulty and stress. Mm -hmm. There's that balance of, is there a difficult relationship you're in? But there's also the balance of loneliness and, and wanting to find in, uh, ways to connect with people. And so uh, these are also some conversations that we would want to have uh, when we're uh, helping that student to achieve what we would call, I guess, their best wellness. Because um, mm -hmm. there's holistic wellness, that's the ideal, but then there's your personal best wellness, and that's really what we're really hoping to achieve. So, mm -hmm. so uh, perhaps I've spoken well about wellness, I think. <laughs> you have, and I'm going to assume, Dr. Harris, these kind of go with the themes of the workshops and presentations that we collaborate with our faculty and staff on. Absolutely. Um, what can the Vikings kind of expect to be experiencing? Just a little quick sneak peek before we run out of time. So we do have um, workshops and things. Our faculty has been so great bringing us into their classrooms, um, especially our allied health faculty who want us to come in and talk with their programs, um, students who are about to go into stressful times in their programs. So we've been doing a lot of stress management, time management, uh, wellness care, self-care to really help our students to be um, prepared. We also work with student engagement on adulting 101 to just help our students to be able to um, 
handle some situations that they haven't had to handle before. So we have those. And even on our website, we have the different um, resources in your community. We have a learning resources website. Then each one of our counties, Clay, Putnam, and St. John's has a link to the um, places in your area. And some students are experiencing mental health crises. And with that, the They've made it super simple. Instead of having to memorize a really long number, you dial 988. 988 will take you to the crisis hotline. And and sometimes we need to to have that conversation with someone. And speaking of that, we have uh, spaces in each one of the ombuds areas that's peaceful. We've got the little... um, sound machine, the lights are lower, there's a a little cushy chairs, so that sometimes people just need a break, sometimes people just need to sit down and take a moment. So those resources are available to our students as well. And with the peaceful areas and all the resources you guys offer, there's also the Random Acts of Kindness Student Support Fund. Quickly, can you go into kind of the emergency, it's an emergency stipend, but it is super exciting to be able to help students in that way. Something I want to make sure we can say is that listeners can contribute to this fund um, to help these students in emergencies, right? Who would they contact, Dr. Harris? So awesome. If you want to contribute to the Random Acts of Kindness Fund, it's a student support fund that offers students resources and emergency needs or kind of, as we like to say, scaffold them so they can continue to be successful. Um, You can reach out to the St. John's River State Foundation. It is a 501c3, so your giving is tax deductible, and the foundation will more than happily route your funding straight to the Random Acts of Kindness. Even employees from St. John's River State College can um, put their annual giving toward the Random Acts of Kindness Fund. Those emergency funds can go to things like rent, utilities, mechanic bills, medical bills, books, it is that emergency financial funds yeah. that students can come to you guys to yeah. discuss a need for. Yeah, something that's going to keep them as a barrier to keep them from being successful in school. And you guys help them get over that. And that is amazing. I absolutely love the fact that this position is going to have a huge impact on students. Thank you all so much for joining us. Um, definitely students check into the student support, support ombuds. And on their website, the sjrstate.edu backslash ombuds for those county support options. There's resources listed for local support, as Dr. Harris had mentioned. And thank you all three, George, Chelsea, and Dr. Harris, for joining us today. Um, I hope everyone listening has had enjoyed the insightful discussion and learned about all the resources you offered for holistic wellness for our students. And I hope students take advantage of it. Please don't forget about the National Suicide and Crisis Prevention Line available to anyone 24-7. It's a call, text, or chat line at 988. Confidential free support right at your fingertips for anyone that needs it. And if you have any questions about any of the topic today or any ideas for topics in the future, Please, we want to hear from you. Reach out at virtuallyvikings at sjrstate.edu. We love your feedback and suggestions. They're always welcome. Please share. You can also reach us through all the social media channels that St. John's offers. And thank you so much for joining. And go Vikings. Go Vikings. Thank you. Yay.